let's get back to the Geek Speak Radio Show on TalkZone.com. And here we are. We're back on the Geek Speak Radio Show on Star Trek Day, talking to Rod Roddenberry. Rod, let's get into Trek Nation now. Um, tell me, the, tell me the genesis of, uh, of Trek Nation. Well, Trek Nation basically started about ten years ago. Believe it or not, um, I, I was inspired by two things. Um, I was inversely inspired inspired by uh, uh, Trekkies, the documentary, um, because. To my experience at that point had been, you know, all these wonderful people who are Star Trek fans, um, and a ma- large, large majority, if not 99%, are very down-to-earth, normal people who simply admire the show and its philosophy. Um, then, on the network TNN, there were these, they were showing Next Generation episodes, and in between each episode, they had a sort of a PSA from one of the Star Trek actors. And it wasn't about, hey, everyone, Star Trek great, you should watch it. It was about the philosophy of Star Trek and how it inspired people. And I said, you know what? I want to be on one of those. So I went to a convention, found out they were there, and went up to them and said, I love your stuff. I think it's great. They kind of said, hey, we should do something together. And I sort of said, yeah, I've been thinking of some stuff, too. They, we both basically had the idea of doing a documentary. I had the idea of doing one um, counteracting the Trekkies documentary, you know, sort of showing... How, how, how the fans are from every walk of life. They're all sorts of people, all social backgrounds, how they've been inspired, etc. And this person said, let's do that from a Gene Roddenberry, uh, a finding Gene Roddenberry point of view, which at the time I wasn't really that on board with because I was just so passionate about sort of showing the fans in a positive light. Anyhow, we spent the next number of years going from convention to convention, shooting people, um, interviews, and sort of finding out more about their take on Star Trek. And it really wasn't until a number of years later that we really kind of, I'd say, outlined what the documentary was going to be about. Neither one of us had really done it before. And we were sort of shooting from the hip, just trying to figure it out as we went. And that's, of course, one of the reasons why it's taken so long to do this, because we didn't start from a good... uh, uh, backdrop, a good, like, script or outline. Um, anyhow, that's, that's it in a nutshell. You know, Ten years later, we're basically done with it, and we're really excited to get it out there. Where are you in the uh, distribution stage? Well, we've shipped it to uh, uh, Paramount, who has sadly turned it down. Um, and we're right now showing it to CBS and Showtime to see if they're interested. We got some really good notes back from them at uh, uh, Paramount that we we don't disagree with. We think are, are pretty good uh, takes on it. So we're probably going to do some slight revisions. I, I mean, I hate saying it because we've been going, we've done many 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 versions of this, but we're going to probably go through and do some slight tweaks on it, and you know, show it to them again and see what their take is on it. So, as much as I want to say that people should be seeing it any time now. I still think we're a number of months away from it being three to six. Right. This is from an email that I got from a listener yesterday, knowing that you were going to be on. They wanted me to ask you, what can we, he meant them as, as fans, what, how can, how can they help? What can they do to help? Um, I don't want to say nothing. I, I, I just want them to be patient. You know, first of all, I, I thank them for their patience because those who have followed Trek Nation have heard me for years say, oh, it's coming out in a few months, oh, it's coming out in a few months, and I think by now they're like, yeah, right, sure, it's coming out. Um, so I, first of all, I just want to thank them for all their support. Those of you who have just found out about it, it'll be coming out in a few months. <laughs> um, uh, right now it's really up to us to figure out the story we want to tell and really narrow it down. It's been so hard to see the forest through the trees. I mean, having me produce this is not the ideal producer uh, in some respects because – it's hard for me to be objective. You know, like I said, we did many different versions of this documentary. I literally have probably at least six different Trek Nation documentaries that go in completely different directions. And each time, you know, we sort of complete it and we realize we've missed the mark. You know, it's been, it's gone too far into left field. And that's, that's what we've really just been doing is fine tuning it. And it's almost sort of <laughs> kind of, I don't know the best analogy, but I just sort of feel like, a blind person finding my way through the forest until I find an exit. I, I just have to keep bumping into things to realize that I've got to go past them, try something else, and eventually I'll make my way through. Have any former cast members been supportive of Trek Nation? 
Uh, you know, I wish I could say there was. There's, there's a number of cast members who I'm, I, I know and arguably I'm, I'm friends with, and I say arguably but just because we don't hang out on a daily basis. Uh, um, Tim Russ and Garrett Wong from Voyager are, are just two really good down-to-earth guys. Uh, I know or have met most of the other cast, and while we are on friendly terms and we do occasionally see each other at shows, the short answer is no. Um, I can tell you one interview that blew me away that's still one of my favorite interviews, and that was with Rick Berman. You know, Rick Berman has, you know, he, he's been in the, in the target um, for the fans for, for many, many years, and they've all said that he's the one that destroyed Star Trek and all these things. And I've always had a compassion. I've always had this sort of, uh, I don't want to call it sympathy, but sympathy empathy for him, because he really had to live in the shadow of Gene Roddenberry. Had I been of age and somehow been the one to take over Star Trek after my father passed away, I, I can almost assure you, one way or another, I would have been um, destroyed by the fans, too. Not because I'm incapable of writing a good story, uh, but just when you're, when you're living up to Gene Roddenberry and those expectations, there's, there's no, you're going to make people upset. You're going to disappoint. Of course, there's going to be a group out there that's happy. I sort of took the point of view as, listen, he's not Gene Roddenberry, and he never tried to be Gene Roddenberry. He did the best he could. Did he really understand the philosophy? I, I'm not going to say he did or didn't, but I can tell you in the interview that I had with him, he's not a bad guy. He's definitely not a bad guy. And he respected my father. He understands the fans who are upset with him, and he says, I did the best I could. You know, and I'm sorry if I didn't make everyone happy, but... This is the best they could. And you know what? To his credit, I think Star Trek could have been, I think Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise could have been a lot crappier. <laughs> That's not much of a compliment, but they really could have missed the mark. You st if they still dealt with uh, interracial issues. They still dealt, dealt with all the social uh, um, issues that we kind of learned to love in Star Trek. Maybe they didn't do as great a job with it, but, you know. And yes, maybe they went into a little bit more of a, I think they went more into a modern day scenario where where there were humanity had not necessarily evolved into the place that my father put them, so we still had some of our petty issues that we had. But I got to give the guy credit. The interview was fantastic for Trek Nation. Um, it is in the documentary, at least a chunk of it. I look forward to when this documentary comes out to having a number of these interviews and others um, out there for people to see because they were really spectacular. Yeah, and I agree, too. This is uh, Romo right here, Rod. Nice to meet you. Um, you know, I actually wanted to let you know that I've seen the trailer for Trek Nation and that I love it. I can't wait till you know, it comes out. And thanks for doing this for a lot of Trekkie fans out there. Oh, my pleasure. And, Absolutely. And then I saw that you had an interview with J.J. Abrams and Stan Lee, just to name a few people that are on Trek, or that are on Trek Nation. You know, how did it feel to become, you know, to ask all these people that, you know, that had a special connection with your father? You know, how did it make you feel, you know, them telling and telling their stories, you know? I have to say it made it made Gene Roddenberry. Here's how I grew up. You know, I knew I knew one side of my father. And then after he passed away, I learned from fans and everyone another side of my father. And, you know, fans have a lot of reverence for my father. You've all heard the great bird of the galaxy. So to some degree, I grew up hearing a lot of that and almost being turned off by it. Like, listen, I, I know you like him, but what about him you, did you like? And I got that from some people, but not many. There was just this constant reverence, and it's hard for a son to sort of identify and learn who his father was through that. So when I met with these other people in his industry, uh, as well as family um, and friends of his, I really got to know the man more as an adult. I knew him as a kid, a young boy, but I never got to know who the man was. And they made him more real. They made him, they brought him to a human level where I could identify with him, no longer as the great bird of the galaxy, but as Gene Roddenberry the man. I got to hear of his flaws. I got to hear of the mistakes. Um, you know, and, and some of these things, while they may have upset me, in many ways they made me happy because they made me say, wow, he was human too. Yes, he was this visionary. Yes, he was a genius. Yes, he did do Star Trek. But he was this flawed, cranky, uh, grumpy man who did bad things here and there, who did drugs back during the original series, who, who did all of these things, had all of these vices. Yet he still, he, and he was able to put the team together, and he, with that team, created this amazing series, not once, but twice. And that's what inspired me. That's the man I love. And that's the man I think the fans should love.
Right, and they're going to have the uh, the trailer for Trek Nation, and the website is linked up on geekspeakradioshow.com if you guys want to go on there and take a look at that. I know a lot of you guys already have, but for those of you who are just hearing this for the first time, where have you been? And it's linked up on geekspeakradioshow.com. So, Rob, before I let you go, let me ask you again. Uh, tell me about some of, some of the events that are happening with the uh, Roddenberry Dive Team. Oh, happy to, happy to. In fact, we're getting close to the end of the year, so there's there's not too much coming up, but... Uh... Uh, we do have a, a picnic uh, August, uh, excuse me, October 2nd down in San Diego. Right now, the, the Ronbray Dive Team, and the short for people who don't know, is I've been a scuba diver for years. I love exploring. I love nature. I love being underwater. I love its similarities to being in space. So I did that before I even really got Star Trek. Anyhow, when I did... When I, when I learned about Star Trek and I was diving, I said, these two worlds need to come together. I started the Roddenberry Dive Team, and it's really just this dive group that gets together every now and then for trips, aquarium tours, picnics, you name it, to, to really appreciate the beauty of our planet, the oceans, etc. Just have this commonality between us where we all understand and love the world in which we live. Anyhow, we have a number of events. As you just said, there is, uh, uh, as you asked, there's a number coming up. We have that. We have a, there is, Something unrelated, but there is a uh, Star Trek cruise coming up in December, December 5th through 12th. And if you go to RoddenberryDiveTeam.com, you can find that on our events page. It should be a lot of fun. We probably have a dive going up to Santa Barbara Island coming up in November. Uh, we are going to be diving in Fort Lauderdale in December. There's a number of things. If you just go to RoddenberryDiveTeam.com, check out the site, check out events. That will bring you up to date. We've got an exciting 2011 coming out. We hope to do more events all across the country, and we look forward to seeing everyone there. Yeah, and the link to the Roddenberry Dive Team is also up on GeekSpeakRadioShow.com. It's been up there since the uh, the first time you and Greg came on uh, the Geek Speak Radio Show. And tell us any of the other projects that you can tell us about that you're working on. Absolutely. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, uh, tr- uh, my, 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 one of my best friends and, and business partner, Trevor Roth. Uh, he's created a comic book, a story called Days Missing. Um, it has received a, a number of first and second prize awards and accolades. Uh, it's the first five issues came out last year. The second series of five issues, I believe, is coming out. Well, don't quote me on this. Go to Roddenberry.com, but either this month or next month. And um, the best compliment we've had is that people ha- who've gotten it, people who don't read comic books, they've read it, and they said, this is truly a Roddenberry piece of work. And that is what we try to do. We're not out there just to create sci-fi, but we're, we're out there to create sci-fi that has subtext, meaning, and, and speaks a little bit deeper than a lot of comic books and stories out there. Um, And also, those of you who don't know, Quester was a a TV series that my father created in 1974. It had a two-hour pilot premiere, and it uh, it unfortunately didn't make it. It did the one pilot premiere that was off the air. We have entered into a deal with Imagine Entertainment to bring the series back, to recreate it, and uh, Imagine Entertainment is a fantastic company. Um, The only reason why I actually let it come back out is because they do... A lot of quality television shows like 24 and I believe The Mentalist and a few others. And um, we're hopefully going to have a new writer, I think Michael Green, uh, being the showrunner. And I think we're right now, we're actually in the middle of pitching this to a few studios. So very, very shortly, there should be some good news on Quester, the new TV series. Uh, and that, those are the two big ones for right now. Those are the ones I want everyone to look out for. If you want to know more, go to Roddenberry.com, check it out. Uh, yeah, again, all, all the links are up on all the links are up on geekspeakwidowshow dot com. Uh, the, the dive team roddenberry dot com. They're all up there. Rod, thanks a lot for coming on the show again. Thanks for having me here. I really appreciate it, and thank you everyone who's listening. Uh, yeah, no I look problem. forward to hearing your feedback on all of our projects, and uh, look forward to seeing you at conventions and different venues around the world. Yeah, we'll definitely come say hi and say hi to Greg and Stephanie for me also. You got it. All right, thanks, Rod. Take care.